good morning, or good evening, depending on which part of the world you're watching this video. My name is Michael Aldridge, Program Manager for Access. And my name is Nathan Helgren, Program Manager for Dataverse and Power Platform. Today we're excited to show you, over the next 20 or so minutes, how the future of Access is bright with new capabilities that we're unveiling today in public beta with Microsoft Power Platform. As Nathan just mentioned, today we announced some exciting news. The launch of the public beta of the new Access Connector for Dataverse and Power Platform. Over the next 20 or so minutes, we'll explain what this new capability can mean for the millions of Access customers using Access every day. And we'll show you two demos of the new scenarios this integration now enables. And then finally, we'll invite you, your organization, to participate in our public beta and try this out for yourselves. Access has a huge base of small, medium, and large organization customers. It is the database solution included within Microsoft 365 and has been for over 20 years with tens of millions of users every month. It's also one of the originators of the low-code, no-code solution development before it was even called that. So we have a huge base of line of business applications. Up until today, you could sync with the cloud through SharePoint or Azure SQL. But today, we announce a richer way to connect your access solutions to the cloud with Power Platform and Dataverse. This unlocks new capability and flexibility for your access-based solutions through the fast-growing Power Platform, an ideal low-code, no-code cloud companion to access. Access customers have told us through customer feedback for the last few years they want to see stronger cloud-enabled capabilities with their access solutions. They want to see hybrid solutions for their organizations that keep the value and ease of use of their access solutions, but offer new capabilities in the cloud. Some of their top requests were the ability to have mobile front-end data entry solutions and the ability to integrate with the over 250 million monthly active users of Microsoft Teams. Then they wanted these different front-end opportunities to be able to have real-time sharing and editing of access in the cloud. And finally, some customers have security and compliance needs where role-based security using AAD is critical. Today's Dataverse Connector announcement helps meet all these needs. And now Nathan will explain how, as well as show you how Power Platform and Access offer an expanded array of capabilities for companies with Access line of business solutions. Let's talk about the Power Platform briefly for those who aren't familiar with it. The Power Platform is a low-code, no-code platform that offers a variety of powerful tools for your data. You start off with a Power Apps license, and this includes Dataverse as the back end that provides cloud-based storage with Azure security, Power Apps that lets you build apps that provide easy access to your data, including mobile use, and Automate, which lets you automate business processes for reduced manual efforts. From there, you can add on other offerings, like Power BI, which provides reporting, dashboards, and analytics, and Power Virtual Agent, which provides easy creation of chatbots using your data. Some specific key benefits you can achieve by using the new connector with Dataverse and the Power Platform is you save time migrating using the Access Migration tool, which simplifies the process. Migrations can take minutes instead of hours or days. Also, you can use your existing Access forms and Power Apps on the same data at the same time. Expand your data story and reduce manual efforts using the Power Platform applications. So let's see those benefits in action. In this demo, we will use a database and form used for cleaning services in a hotel. Daily, the service staff fill out paper forms as they clean and resupply the rooms, order replacement supplies, and fill up their cards. These forms would be turned in at the end of the shift. Then, someone would have to enter those paper sheets into the access manually. Also then, someone would have to manually create any orders from the data. So let's see how the Power Platform can improve this. Earlier, I created an app to show how Power Apps can add data to Access after migration. Here's my Access database that I connected to Power Apps, and here's my phone with Power Apps on it. I'll run Power Apps and pick my app. I'll tell it to add a new row. I'll name this Phone Test. And now I'll add some dates. Add a drop down value and a number, and then save it. Now you can see the new record saved down here, and if I refresh Access, you can see the record in Access. 
So how did we do it? Here's our access database and it has multiple tables that store items in stock or the recording the room check stats and the cart fill requests. Each of these would have a paper log that would be entered into access after each shift was done. So now let's migrate. To migrate from access to Dataverse in the Power Platform, follow a few simple steps. Right click a table and select export and Dataverse. Select the table or tables you want to migrate and you can select all of them at once if you want to to save time. Then select your Dataverse environment from the list provided. This list will show all the Dataverse environments associated with your account. So you can choose to review this list of tables now and see which tables are going to be migrated over and which relationships. By default, Access is going to create linked tables for each one of these so that it can link the form back into Dataverse. This will allow the user to continue to use and manage their data when they're using the Access client and uh, continue to process it that way as well. So click Next. So this is the validator. It's going to make sure you're only trying to migrate data that can be supported by Dataverse. If we migrated data over that we did not support, you'd see errors here for any data that's not supported. So if the validation says OK and it's complete, then we can go ahead and move forward. So at this point, I'm going to skip forward a little bit in time to preserve the demo, but be aware this will take several minutes. When it's done, you'll see this confirmation screen. Once the migration is complete, you can see all the linked tables in Access. And you can also see that a backup was created for all the tables to preserve data if there were any issues. So now we're going to switch over to Power Apps and look at the Dataverse database. When we go here, you can see all the tables that were migrated. You can check them to see the relationships were there. And you can also make sure your data was migrated. So let's create a quick app, the one that I just showed you. So we're going to go to Create, and then select Dataverse in the Start From Data section. Now you pick your environment and the table you want to use to build your app. So Power Apps is going to create the app with a gallery list, uh, a record view, and an add and edit feature automatically for you. Okay, now that the app is done, I'm just going to customize the view and then edit some pages to show a few of my fields. I'm going to speed this up right now to save a little bit of time so you don't have to watch me go through this. Okay, when that's done, I'm going to select the first page and test the app. I'll just go ahead and add a card ID. I'll add in some dates for check-in and check-out. And I'll add a couple different items on the cart order. Okay, now that that's been done, you can see the new record present. I'm gonna switch back over to Access and show you that now in Access, the record's automatically visible because the form is linked to Dataverse. We do have to refresh the screen because Access isn't going to auto refresh once the data shows up in Dataverse. So now I can add a new row in Access and show you that it's gonna show up in Dataverse. And see here, as I've entered in the data, you can go back to Dataverse and see that the data has migrated properly. And now I'm gonna jump back to Access and I'm going to use one of the forms that I had. And this is gonna be really quick because we've already seen data being entered, but I'm gonna click the form. I'll add in a little bit of the data and I'll save it. And when I go back to Dataverse, you can see that the record from the form also immediately available. So right now I can use both my Access client and Power Apps on the same data. If I'm happy with this, I can save it and publish it and assign it to users. I'm going to show you one more thing. I don't have time to demo all of this, but uh, here's an example of how you could use a Power Automate with the same process. I created this Automate flow that is going to look every time a record is added or updated on the cart database, and it's going to create a new row in the order database, and I'm telling it what data I want it to move over. And so every time a row is submitted, a row will be submitted to the orders database at the same time with that same data. Here's a quick recap of what we just did. You start your migration in Access. The Access validator makes sure all the data you're migrating is supported by Dataverse. The data is migrated into Dataverse, including the tables, relationships, and the content. Users can keep using their existing access forms to submit their status and orders using data that lives in Dataverse. And at the same time, you can build mobile power apps using that exact same data and use both at the same time. 
you can only migrate your data to one database. So you'll need to choose if you want to use the full version of Dataverse with Power Apps, or if you want to use Microsoft Teams to supply apps to users. Here are a few points to consider. With Dataverse for Teams, it comes included as part of a Microsoft 365 E3 or E5 license. All the apps and flows and such that you create are used inside of Teams. You won't have access to the customer data type or multiple transaction currencies that are in the full version of Dataverse. Not every control is available for use in Teams, for example, the barcode reader. And there's a maximum capacity of two gigabytes. Large files are stored in the blob to save money, but there's no auditing capability. With the full version, it requires you to have a Power App or Dynamics 365 license. Your apps can be used on any device so long as you have licenses for the users. You have access to all data types and all controls. You start with 10 gigabytes of storage, and then you can increase it from there if you need to. And you get the benefit of blob and log storage, which reduces the cost of storing large files and audit logs. Plus, developers have the ability to use direct APIs and build plugins. If you were considering Dataverse for Teams, here's how you can use Teams and the Power Platform for the same scenario we just did. To migrate access data to Dataverse for Teams, first you need to enable Power Apps on your Teams by downloading the app. You must create your first app in order for your database to be set up for the migration. Select Start Now, and then selecting the team you want to associate it to. You don't have to finish it, but you need to get past the naming stage so that it creates your Dataverse instance for the whole team. Now that the database is ready, let's go to back to Access to migrate. So here's another copy of our unmigrated Access data. The migration steps are the same. You only need to pick a Teams environment from the list. I'll show the migration, but I'm going to speed it up because the steps are exactly the same. After it's migrated, you can check the tables in Teams and also create a quick app similar to how we did in Power Apps. So to access your tables and content, click Build, make sure your appropriate team is selected, and then you can click on the table. And to review your data, click Edit Data. Now I'll create a quick app in Teams and configure it. I'm going to speed this up just a little bit. I'll add a row, and you can see it in Access just like in the last demo. The primary difference is that this can only be accessed in Microsoft Teams by team members. Now let's go back to Access. We can refresh the data and see the data we just added in Teams. And now we'll submit a new row using the existing form. And then we save it. Now, back in Power Apps, we can click on the Build menu, select our table, and then choose to edit the data, and you can see the new data is available. Here's what we just did. You migrate your data using the same tool, and the validator checks the data eligibility. The data is migrated into Dataverse for teams, including tables, relationships, and content. Users keep using their existing forms, and at the same time, you can build Power Apps inside of Teams, and your team members can use the apps. Nathan, those are great examples of what you can achieve using the Access Connector for Dataverse and Power Platform. I can't believe how fast you can create an app with Power Apps. But a question I get asked by Access customers a lot is, well, why not just use SQL? I mean, we've supported SQL for a long time. How would you answer that question? That's a great question. And yes, SQL is a great option, but it has some challenges. As I said earlier, the Power Platform is designed to be low code, no code, which is a great companion for Access, which is a pioneer in low code, no code solutions. Because of this, Dataverse and the Power Platform reduces a lot of the work you might face if you're using SQL. Some examples of this, SQL is relational storage only, with a steeper learning curve. Using Dataverse, you get relational storage, plus you get your large files and your audit files stored in the blob and log storage. That's cheaper than relational storage and helps with system performance. And Dataverse handles all the performance, stability, and disaster recovery without adding another server for the IT department to have to manage. Oh, wow. So it takes away the complexity of SQL. Definitely. We're releasing this as a public beta, and we still have a few gaps that we're working on filling. 
We have support for many data types. Some data types have max size limits, and those are being reviewed by the validator and we'll catch them. In the coming months, more data types are being made available. For a detailed list of types and sizes, you can use the QR code on this page to access the online documentation. So, what happens to unsupported data? Here's a quick walkthrough. Once you start migration, the validator will check all of the content. If all the submitted data meets the criteria, it's migrated into Dataverse. If there are columns or rows that do not match our support limits, you have a choice. You can either choose to continue forward and migrate all the supported data to Dataverse, and any unsupported data will be stored in an access table. This allows you to move some of the data over for security and compliance reasons, or to allow you to start using apps and other features, while giving you the opportunity to import it later when Dataverse can support it, or you could use it through access forms locally. You can also choose to cancel out completely, which will result in no migration at all. So we hope you've enjoyed a glimpse of the benefits that you can reap by combining access with the low-code, no-code capabilities of Power Platform and Dataverse. As you saw today, this integration and ability to migrate your access data to Dataverse unlocks new ways to keep your access-based solutions modern and relevant in a cloud-centric world. It offers you mobile solutions. It offers you added security and compliance with AAD. And then the option of Teams-based solutions with Dataverse for Teams and allowing all these different new front ends to be able to have cloud client synchronization. So now that you know all that, we hope that many of you will try this public beta and give us feedback. And here's how you can get started. First, point your phone to this QR code on screen or use the URL to go to our Access Power Platform website, which gives you all the steps and details your organization needs to try our public beta. This will walk you through the step-by-step -step process to get your latest version of the Access Beta with Dataverse support and how you get a trial of Dataverse if you need it. Both Michael and I want to thank you for your time today. We hope you enjoy exploring what this can mean for taking your access solutions into the cloud.